Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path. Today, I want to show you how to make the prismatic Christmas ornament. For the ornament, you are going to need one gram of a size 11 Delica, one gram of a size 15 Mayuki seed bead, a 12 millimeter Rivoli, a large prism with a top drilled hole, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. You're going to need two yards of thread, and if you're going to use fire line, I would not go over a six pound fire line, and you're going to need one size 12 beading needle. So for the prism, this is going to be, as you can see here, the width and the height of the prism because it doesn't actually have a millimeter size when I buy it. Um, these are actual prisms that would go um, on like an older chandelier that you might need replacements for. So this will give you an idea of what we're going to be doing. The total length of the ornament is going to be about 3 inches long. So what I'm going to show you today is how to take that 12 millimeter that we encased last week and actually encase the whole back side of it and then how to make a brick stitch bale that will um, hold on to our actual big teardrop shape. So let's go ahead and get started. So here is the ornament I'm going to show you how to do today. Here is one sample that I've done with the Light Siam Rivoli, a silver lined green Delica, and then the galvanized silver 15-0. Then here's another sample that I've done again with the uh, Light Siam Rivoli, the 11O Silver Line Green Delicas, and then the 15O Galvanized Gold. So you can see the difference there in the silver and the gold. And don't just think of it, you know, as a Christmas ornament. You could also do it as something to hang off your rear view mirror uh, or in a window as a really fun prism. So with this one, I've used the Opaque Mint Delica. And then the 15-0 um, sea foam, galvanized sea foam. But I'm going to be showing you how to completely cover the back of your Rivoli. And then how, again, to make these little attachments for it. So the first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to start out just like we did last week. You'll thread on 32 size 11 Delicas. Go through them all one more time. And then through the first bead again. And this is where we'll actually put it on. Um, I, this is my half inch wooden dowel that I used last week. <clears throat> and so we'll just actually start regular peyote stitch. So you'll, you'll take and you're coming out of one Delica here. You'll pick up one Delica. Skip a Delica, which is going to be this next one. And then go through the next one. So pick one skip one go through one and pull that thread because what you want is for them to lay side by side just like this now I'm going to pick up a Delica I'm going to skip a Delica and go through a Delica and I'm going to do this all the way around just picking up a Delica skipping one and then going through the next one and again you're going to do this all the way so at this around. point I've gone all the way around and I'm ready to step up so I've stepped up through the very first bead that I added in the round now I'm ready to start my 15s so I'm going to pick up one 15 and then I'm going to go through the next 11 delica that's sticking up on this side now what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm just going to slide this off So that way, as I pull the thread tightly, it will allow it the piece to cup. And I'm just going to continue picking up a 15 and going through the next 11 Delica, sticking up a 15, go through the next Delica. And we're going to do this all the way around, just picking up a 15 and going through the next delicate So now delica that I've gone all up. the way around, you can tell that the piece is cupped and domed. I'm coming out of the last delica on the row. So to step up, all I'm going to do is come through the first 15 that I added in this round, which is going to be this bead right here. Now normally for a 12 millimeter Rivoli, I would leave 
and leave this with just the one row. Because we're actually going to be hanging this, I want to make it more secure so that I know my Rivoli isn't going to fall out. So I'm going to go ahead and add another row of 15s. So I'm just going to pick up a 15 and go through the next 15 that's sticking up. And then a 15 and go through the next 15 sticking up. And you'll want to do this all the way around, pulling tightly. And once you finish, go ahead and stitch through so that you're coming out of any of the 11 O delicas sticking up here along the so outer edge of our piece. So now that you've got the front rows finished and you've stitched to the back, we're going to do a row of 15s along the back side of the piece. So you'll just pick up a 15 and go through the next 11 delicas sticking up. And we're going to do this all the way around on this back side. And as you can see, I keep my thumb in here and just kind of keep it along the edge as I work. And what happens is this piece pulls up and you can see it presses up against my thumbnail here. And I found this is a really good way to do this. Um, just because it, it allows it to get through this cup formation for you and it keeps it even as you work around. So that's a really, really good thing um, by doing it this so way. So once you've gone all the way around adding your 15s, this is what your piece will look like so far. Now we're going to use our 12 millimeter Rivoli and we want to lay it in face down. So you're going to be seeing the backing of your stone so that when you flip it over, you're going to see this and then the back side will look like this. I have stepped up through my first 15 that I added in this round, and now I'm gonna work another round of 15s, just picking up a 15 and going through the next 15 all the way around the piece. And when you get back to the beginning, be sure and step up through this first 15 that you added now that in the round. Now you've gone all the way around, you're ready to add a decrease row. So to do this decrease row, I'm going to pick up one 15 and I'm going to go through the next 15 that's sticking up here along the edge. Then I'm not going to add anything, but I'm going to go through this lower 15 and upper 15. So through this one and then this one. So essentially, I'm, I'm skipping one little space here where I would normally put a 15. Now I'll pick up a 15, go through the next 15 that's sticking up, then I'm going to go through the lower 15 and the upper 15. So here and here. and then pick up a 15, go through the next 15 that I've got sticking up, go through the lower 15, and the upper 15. So essentially we're making the star shape that we made last week in the earrings. And you're just going to continue this all now the way around. I've gone all the way around, I've stepped up through the first 15 that I added in this round which is this bead right here. Now, as you can see, my next bead sticking up is way over here. So I'm going to pick up one 15, and I'm going to go through the 15 sticking up over here. So when that bead pops into place, you can see here that it moves a little bit, and that's okay. You're going to need that movement for the next round. So pick up one 15, go through the next 15 that's sticking up. And again, it just pops the bead in between those spaces. Pick up your 15 and go through the next 15 sticking up. And you're just going to do this all the way around, just going through the beads that you added in this previous row. So once you get back to the beginning, I'm going to pick up my last 15 and I'm going to go through the first 15 that I started with here. And then to step up, I'm going to go through the first 15 that I added in this row, which is going to be this one right here in that space. <clears throat> here we go. 
and you're just going to continue and work one more round of just picking up a 15 and going through the next 15 that's sticking up. And you'll work so back I've gone all, the way, all the way around. And I'm going to step up by going through the first speed that I added in this round, which will be this speed right here. Now I'm going to work another decrease row. So to do that, I'm going to pick up 115, and then I'm going to go through the next two 15s that are sticking up in this row. And then pick up 115 and go through the next two 15s in the row. So essentially, you're only going to be adding four 15s in this row. So I'm going through the last two 15s for my row. And then I'm going to step up through the first speed I added, which is going to be this speed right here. So go through and then step up. So you can see now I've got one, two, three, four. So I'm going to pick up one bead and I'm going to go through the next bead sticking up. Go through, pick up one, go through the next one sticking up. one and go through the next one sticking up and then one more is going to be this bead right here let's see nope, this one right here and then i'm going to step up through the first bead that i added in this round which is going to be this one right here so you'll have four beads now here in the center Okay, I've got one, two, three, four. And I'm just going to go through the beads here. I'm not going to add anything. I'm just going to go through those four beads, pulling those together so that it pulls the back completely together. Now, I'm going to stitch through, through my beads to exit any of the single bead rows of Delicus. So not here, but like here here, here, any single so bead row. So now that row. you're coming out of your single bead Delica row, we're ready to add the first part of our brick stitch bail. So I'm going to pick up one Delica. I'm going to skip the space right here where my two beads are. And then I'm going to go through the next single bead Delica. So that when I pull it, it's going to pop that Delica into place. Now, I want to reinforce this connection between this bead and the two beads on each side of it. So, I'm going to come down through the right-hand bead here in my stack of two. I'm going to go up through the left-hand bead of that stack of two. And then I'm going to go through these three beads, my one, two, and three. And if you can only go through one at a time, then only go through one at a time. Now you can see here, again, I've got a two bead row, so I'm gonna go through the bead on the right back down through the bead on the left and then through the two beads again so through this one and then the one I added so now I'm ready to actually start the brick stitch so to do that I'm going to pick up two 11's and I'm going to come back through the same Delica that I'm coming out of so that it would make a circle I'm going to go up through the bead on the right, down through the bead on the left, and now I'm going to skip this center bead again, and I'm just going to go right up through the bead right next to where my thread's coming out at. And I'm going to pull that tight. 
Now I'm going to do an increase row. So I'm going to pick up two 11s and I'm going to go under my thread bridge here. And I'm going to go up through the second bead that I added, which is going to be this bead right here. And when I pull it, it's going to lay down just like that. Now pick up 111, and I'm going to go under the same thread bridge that I just went over, or I'm sorry, under to add these two beads. I'm going to pull that thread, and I'm going to go back up through the bead I just added. And as you can see, I put my thumbnail on there and then pull that thread straight up so that it gets my bead sitting up straight. Now I'm ready for an increase row again, so I'm going to pick up two 11s. I'm going to come under the first thread bridge and then up through the second bead that I added. Now one 11 and go under the next thread bridge and then up through the bead I added and then 111 go under the same thread bridge I just went under. Pull that through and then go up through that bead again. So I have a row of four. Now I have to do a decrease. So I'm going to pick up two 15 or two 11s. I'm going to skip the first thread bridge and go under the second thread bridge here. Pull that through and go up through the second bead that I added. Now here's the thing. When I pull this thread, these beads are not going to lay perfectly straight like these do. So I'm going to have to go down through the first bead I added and then back up through the second bead and pull on that so that it makes those beads sit straight exactly where you need them. Now pick up 111, go under the next thread bridge here, and then through that bead. Okay, so that gives me a row of three. Now I need a row of two, so I'm gonna pick up two 11s skip the first thread bridge and go under the second one. Go up through the second bead you added. And now when you do that, those two beads are not going to sit straight. So we have to go down through the first one and up through the second one again so that it pulls those beads straight. Thread on 111 and go down through the bead right next to where your thread's coming out. So you can see that it matches this down here. I'm going to go back up through and then through my single bead again. And this time I'm going to pick up 12 15s. Go back through the same delica you're coming out of to make a circle. And then I'm going to reinforce this little loop and then stitch back through my beads and trim this so working thread. So once you get your thread tied off and finished, this is what your piece will look like so far. Now I have enough thread left over that I'm going to make another brick stitch component exactly like this one. So to start it, I'm going to pick up two 11s. I'm going to bring it down and come back up through the first bead again. Pull that thread and I'm going to go down through the second bead. I'm going to thread on 111 and I'm going to come right back up through that first bead. So that now, this is what your piece will look like. We're ready for an increase row, so I'm going to pick up two 11s. I'm going to go under that thread bridge. And then up through the second bead. Thread on one 11. 
go under the same thread bridge you just went under and then up through that bead again. Pull the thread. All right, what did I do here? Ha, huh, there we go. All right, do an increase row, so two 11s. Go under the first thread bridge here. And then up through the second bead that I added. One 11. Go under the next thread bridge. And then one eleven and go under the thread bridge I just went under. And then through that bead. So now I have my row of four and I'm ready to start the decreased row. So I'm going to pick up two 11s. I'm going to go under the second thread bridge and then back up through that second bead. Now remember, those two beads aren't going to sit straight. So we have to go down through the first bead and up through the second bead to pull that tightly. Now, one 11, come under the next thread bridge and then go through the 11. Another decrease row, so it's two 11s. Go under that second thread bridge and then up through your second bead. Now remember, they're not gonna sit right, so we have to go down through the first one and then up through the second bead again. And then one 11 and go down through that bead so that now you have your triangle. Now what I would do is I would go through these beads again to reinforce and then completely finish this one off. Then we'll take a new piece of thread, make a second one, except for we're not going to add this very top 11. We're going to stop Once at that Once you have point. your second little brick stitch diamond made, less that top bead, then you're ready to connect the two pieces together. So I'm going to lay them together just like this. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through the end bead on the diamond and then down through the other bead here on the diamond I'm currently coming out of. I'm going to hold that. So that when you do, now the two diamonds are connected together. Now I'm going to go through these beads and just reinforce it once more because we'll be going through these beads several times. And then once you get that done, then we're ready to actually connect this to the Rivoli that we've already encased. Let me come. You're going to come out of the top bead here. And if you look directly across from where you added the top bail, you have an open space here where your two beads are at. So we're actually going to take and connect that right in there to where that space is at. So I'm going to take my thread. As you can see, it's coming out towards the left hand side here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this thread and I'm going to go through the single bead delega here to the left of that space where I want it to go. So I'm going to go through just the one bead and I'm going to pull that. So as you can see, those will be now, let me double check here. Actually, I needed to come over one more. So I'm just going to pull that back out and then come through that one right there. And that's how easy it is if you don't get it in the exact spot. 
So now when I pull that and I look, those are exactly opposite from each other. So I have it connected there, but I need to connect it on this other side as well. So just like I did at the top, I'm just gonna do a little turnaround. So I'm gonna go through the bead on the left, then the bead on the right, Then through the bead I went through here to start, which is this one right here. And then through the bead, the top bead on my little bell that I have made here. Now I need to go through the next single Delica bead, which is, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna skip this space and I'm gonna go through this one here so that when I pull that thread, now that little diamond shape is directly centered in that little space there. Now I wanna do that turnaround and I'm gonna connect, I'm gonna turn it here to the back so that you can see there as well. I'm gonna do that turnaround and I'm gonna go through this connection once more. And then I'm gonna stitch through my beads to exit either this Delica here or this Delica so here on the back. So once you've gone and you've attached it and you stitch down through the bead, then you're ready to actually connect it to your crystal. So you want to go ahead and put one side of the triangle or the little diamond shape on each side of your prism. So I'm coming out here and I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go through the top pole of the prism. Then I'm gonna go through the bead here on my other triangle and pull that thread. Then I'm gonna go through the top pole of the stone again go through the bead here at the bottom of this one and then through the top pole of the prism again. And basically what I'm going to continue to do is I'm going to continue to go through each 11 here at the bottom of my little diamond shapes. I'm just going to continue to go through those beads and then back through the prism until I feel like those are nice and secure. Then I'm going to stitch through my beads and get so rid of this thread. So once you have the thread tied off, then this will be your completed piece. So you can see this would be really, really pretty, um, you know, for somebody who does their tree pink, for somebody who has breast cancer, you know, or um, fighting breast cancer um, for that pink one, then the aqua like I showed you, and then your traditional Christmas colors. So you can see how versatile you can do so the ornament. If you have trouble with the ornament itself actually fixing the back of it, completely encasing it, where I used one color, you may want to check out my written pattern for this project because I used a different color for each row that I did as example here behind me. We do have the prisms available under the holiday section of our website as well as kits and the pattern, and you can find those at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye!